All right. Good evening, Raider Nation. This is Coast to Coast Raider Nation. I am Captain Jack, and until I know otherwise, I'm be flying solo. Probably, probably, because I didn't hear anything back from uh, Big L. I'm, I'm sure Big L will probably be coming in in just a little bit. So hopefully we'll be getting uh, getting him to come in. For all those that are hopefully getting this live, and it should be going in here, I would hope that you be checking it out on the Captain Jack Raider page. That is the Raider Pirate, Captain Jack Rackham. If not, then be sure to check us out on Spreaker.com, where we are coming live to you on Spreaker.com. Lots going on in Raiderland. It's, you know, just been a, shall we say, a bunch of unhappiness, hate, and discontent for quite a while. I mean, what what can you say about a team that just does not have a lot going for it? It doesn't have a lot going for it, and it, it's only going to get worse. I mean, we are halfway through the season... We are one and seven. And I don't know of anybody else that would have thought that this team would be that miserable at such a juncture in the season. I mean, we had high hopes for the season coming in. And I know that I did a show with uh, somebody who shall remain nameless, and we did the uh, the show from starting out. And uh, we, we went through the we went through the uh, the season. And we had we had the Raiders at like a any, anywhere from a good record. I think it was I had him at like ten and uh, ten and six, and he had him at eleven and five. And I'm just saying, no, it's not. It's it can't be that. And when you look at what we had, I mean, it's it's just horrible. By the way, we are joined by the one and only Big L. How you doing there, Big L? Hey, what's going on, people? How you doing? I'm doing all right. Uh... We are here doing our thing, and welcome to those that are out there listening. We, you know, I have my own special little twist about it, and I am very much 190% anti-wine, anti, you know, piss and moan about things. So, the reality of it is, is from my perspective, all this year pretty much has been a working interview. So did we get told that from the beginning? No. But then again, to be quite honest with you, I mean, I know there's season ticket holders out there that are a little irritated. Okay. I'm sorry. Um, did your mama tell you everything that was going on in the house? No. Um, we're doing our best. To hold it together as far as fans, some of y'all could be doing a whole lot better. All this whining and trying to blame everybody for everything, you know, that's real millennial of you guys. The reality of it is, is we're doing everything we can as Raider fans, real Raider fans, to keep this real. And what's real to me is we don't like it. However, it's what we got. So why complain about it? The working interview is the people, what we're trying to do is figure out who we have to work with for the future. And for the future means next year, the off season. Okay, Bruce Irvin, Bruce Irvin is... You know, he's an okay player. He's a nice player. He didn't fit what was going to go on here. And him having his little fits and sitting on the sidelines pouting, okay. How many friends friends do you have that you like sitting, watching, mope, and have fits? Most men break up with a woman like that. Most women break up with a dude that does that. So why should we be paying somebody $8 million to sit on our sidelines like that? You, you know, L, I couldn't have said it better myself, but unfortunately, I'm going to have to slow your roll. And the only reason why I'm going to have to slow your roll is because we have to get to some administrative work here on 
the Coast to Coast Raider Nation show. And hopefully I got him still on the line. Uh, Raider B, are you still on the line, shipmate? Yes, I am, sir. Okay. For all folks out there, this is Steve Raider B, Big B. And uh, the gentleman has been doing more charitable work on accident than a lot of us do on purpose. And I want to make sure that I had Steve come on. And, and trust me, you are, I mean, you were rolling so well L that I mean it, it, it could it could have you could have put a cherry on top and sold yourself at the store for the big L roll. Hey, look, I don't sell at the store; I sell on the corner. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first, folks. You heard it here first. Hopefully, I got my volume up all the way. Go go ahead, there, Raider B. Please please let the audience know all that you want to tell them about a great event that you got going on. This Saturday over at the Ronald McDonald House. Go ahead there, shipmate. Oh, you got it, buddy. Yeah, I just wanted to tell the Raider Nation what's up. And, uh, you know, this Saturday we're having a another event at the Ronald McDonald House, at the world's largest Ronald McDonald House. Let me go ahead and get that straight for a little bit. We got like 163 families there. And uh, this Saturday what we're going to do is I'm calling out all um, – Raiders that dress up, let's put that, super fans, whatever you want to name them. I'm asking for everybody to come out, uh, spend some time with us. It's going to be from 12 uh, p.m. to 2 p.m. And what you're going to be basically doing is sitting down with some Ronald McDonald House children, doing a special activity, watching them draw and all that. I'm hoping by the outfits that we bring to them, it will bring a little hope and smiles to them while they're going through their uh, chemo treatments, you know, their... uh, they're on the list of transplants. They're fighting cancer, leukemia, you name it. They're fighting the worst. And the only thing we're trying to do is bring some smiles and hope to them. So I'm asking anybody that dresses up to come on out. Please join uh, Captain Jack and myself and uh, bring some smiles to these families and these kids. They need it. Well, I definitely am looking forward to it there, uh, uh, B. And, and, again, hopefully I got the phone as close to the mic as possible so that they can actually hear you. I got you on speaker, and and hopefully I did it all right. So make sure that if you have anything, uh, if you can comment on it over here at the Captain Jack page that I know that y'all can hear what the Raider B is talking about. I know I'm going to be talking about it again before the end of the the show, so hopefully um, that if they can hear you, they'll at least hear this big old gruff bastard talking about it. Now, is there anything in particular that they need to do, Steve, to make sure that 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 their uh, that their activities will be going for the best? And again, this is for all fans that yeah, want to dress fans, out. All sport, you name it. You know, anybody that you know that that dresses up, uh, any sport, any fan, any team, uh, we want them to come out because you never know who what team they represent or what team this child loves and all that you know all child love all sports and all athletes and we represent every team out there you know and as the humanitarians we're coming out there uh to bring those smiles and that hope to them and if you have any questions any questions whatsoever my phone number is listed on the captain jack give me a call uh the only thing i ask is bring heart bring your heart because i guarantee it's going to get touched i guarantee it well, we definitely are looking forward to it, Steve. Obviously, I will. I will see you out there on Saturday. I I, I got to figure out how to get out there, shipmate. That's the only thing that I that I got going for you. But you and I, I will you. talk. You and I will talk offline about that. But the, you know, you will see me uh, definitely out there with you. And like you said, football fans with heart, no matter what your team is, go out and come out. And let's show some some of that warmth and heart for the kids that are out there at the Ronald McDonald House this Saturday, uh, it's around around noon time, if I'm not mistaken. There, Steve. Yeah, around noon. You know, like I said, if you need directions, if you need any help, if you're if you're flying down like Captain is, and you need a ride over there, it's it's all hooked together. I have an SUV. We'll pile all in. You know, I got I got enough room for well at least six people, eight people. So. I'll fill up my SUV just for people that want to come out there and, you know, to do this. Um, it's, you know, you, you'll be able to see these kids. You'll be able to interact with all the families. You'll be able to visit the world's largest. I mean, these kids are coming from all over the world, everywhere you can imagine. Sweden, China, Japan. They're coming from everywhere. 
Uh, so, you know, us Raider Nation, we're worldwide, and this is a representation of it. So, uh, you know, come on out and join Captain Jack and myself. Like I said, if you need a ride, give me a call. I'll come out and pick you up. And you know what? I will say that Steve is the best Uber driver going, and he gives you entertaining stories along the way. Uh, <laughs> but but his wife might call in the middle of it to make sure that I, I, well, what somebody lost their uh, was it their charger the last time we were in your car, correct, Steve? <laughs> yeah, that's correct. That's correct. There you go. See, so you'll be entertained. So make sure you come on out. Uh, get with me on my page, or get with uh, Steve Raider B Big B over at Facebook. Remember, it's this Saturday over at the Ronald McDonald House, and uh, we we want to see everybody out there. And Steve, uh, any last words? You know what? I, I I'm looking for this with W. Let's okay. make a W all all around. You know, we'll make a W at the World on House, and we'll make a W on the field. I, I, that's some great words. Hey, Steve, thank you for calling in, shipmate. Definitely appreciate that, there, brother. And like I said, I'll get with you offline. We'll we'll talk more about it. Uh, no problem. God bless everybody. God bless you. And now, like I said, that's that's my boy Raider B again. And and L, I I, I hated cutting you off, but yeah, you you were on a roll. You were on a roll. Who is that? That is the that is the owner of the Bunny Ranch. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's the guy that's dead. Okay. So a dead guy wins an election in the Nevada State Assembly seat. Hey, I if, if I would have known that, I would have ran in Nevada as Captain Jack, and I probably would have won as well. Okay. Again, great advertisement and great promotion for the fact that the, come on out for the Ronald McDonald House this Saturday, which I believe is, let me see, 11, 10. That's the 9th of November, if I'm not mistaken. It is the 9th, right? So, well, or is it the 10th? It's the 10th. Whenever Saturday is, the 10th is this weekend. Because, yeah, we're playing on the 11th, right? Yeah. Okay, we're playing on the 11th. So, yeah, that's Saturday, the 10th of November at the Ronald McDonald House up in the Bay Area. For more information... Check out my page, Captain Jack Rackham's page, uh, J. Captain Jack Rackham and Steve Raider B. Bigby. Again, we want to see you out there. Dress up, dress out, dress appropriately for the kids because we want to see you out there. Now, because I unfortunately hit you right, right, I mean, I think it was like a shovel to the face because it, it was it was straight out of left field. And I know that you weren't looking for it. But you were on a roll, and you were talking, and, and I agree with you, you know, it's like, Mama didn't tell you everything, Mama didn't say why you had to eat your vegetables, Mama didn't say why you had to like your sister, or your brother, but it Unless was good Unless you were in West it. Virginia. Oh, no, well, okay, well that's something else entirely. Well, I'm not going to convict the whole state of West Virginia, I'm just going to say the Ozarks in general. Okay, well having said that... <laughs> Mama didn't tell you everything, but the thing is is that Coach Gruden didn't tell you everything either. And Coach Gruden or Mark Davis did not tell you why. Or Reggie. I mean, everybody thinks Reggie's just a pawn that just sits there. Look, don't get it twisted. He is, he has an active role in this. Gruden basically has agreed to be the fall guy on everything. Reggie sits back in the cut, but Reggie has a lot to do with this too. Please trust and believe. There are people out there that are completely and utterly convinced that at the end of the season, Reggie's going to be gone, which um, very well may be true. God, I, actually, I hope not because I, yeah, I, think, I exactly. think that Reggie and Gruden will make a great team. I think Reggie... Need some help. And I, that's one of the points that I'm going to talk about later on as well. I think that we are a good team with Gruden, with Reggie, but I need and we need some help. If Reggie was to lose, or should I say, if Reggie were to step down from the general managership here in Oakland, or if he was ceremoniously exit to exit or asked to step down, he would probably be unemployed maybe a week or two before he was asked to help rebuild somewhere else. So don't get it twisted. Everybody, people that don't know football, basically who I'm talking about is you keyboard, keyboard kingpins and all of you armchair general managers that think you know a lot, but really all you know how to do is bump your gums. Um, 
there's a whole lot more intricacies to running a football team, coaching a football team, and building a football team than going out there and wrapping a whole lot of money about around a bunch of names. Yeah, it'd be ideal to have somebody like Odell Beckham all, all because he's not happy. Or let's go get Le'Veon Bell because he wants to leave Pittsburgh. No, Le'Veon Bell wants to go where he's paid the most. Don't, exactly. Don't get, don't get that. He wants to leave Pittsburgh because Pittsburgh is obviously not going to pay him. One and two, Le'Veon Bell overplayed his hand because not only one, did they not pay him. Two, they're not going to franchise tag him because if they do, they're going to have to pay him the quarterback exception now because they did it two years in a row, and they're not going to give him twenty something million dollars. Actually, uh, 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 L, I think they 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 still do have that franchise tag contract. That is the one that he has not signed. They have not rescinded that. So I I am of uh, a mind he, that he still has that tag that will go on for this year. He has until. I believe, uh, I'm not sure, it might even yeah. be this week. He has until this week to come in and sign Yeah, a but that's contract. what I mean. He comes in week 10, but if they were to do it again next year. No, they can't do it again next year. As long as he comes in. There's some sort of loophole. Right, well, no, here's the thing. As long as he comes in this year by the time frame in order for him to get credit for this year. Okay, he has to come in by a certain date. If he comes in by that date signs his tender with the amount of money to, well I guess that they would obviously prorate the contract for the for the eight games but it was still under the the same nickel that they would have to have him signed by prorated by the amount of games that he would be playing he would get credit for this year if he does not come in by that date then he does not get credit for this year and he is still a Pittsburgh Steeler in property next year so they, he still has the same problems that he has coming in next training camp. He doesn't get credit for this year. He is still a property of the Pittsburgh Steelers. So that is that is the quote-unquote loophole slash sticking point between Le'Veon Bell and the Pittsburgh Steelers. Yeah, but see, and, that, and that's the thing that I think when we say sticking point, he will still be in a position of... I mean, his leverage is limited at best, but where I say he overplayed his hand, he messed up in the pit, and the, and the Steelers found his replacement. In uh, James Conner. James yeah. Conner. Well, James Conner is no Le'Veon Bell, but he's not a slouch either. He He's yeah. done a lot of good things that they want in a running back. With Conner's role being pronounced this year, and he's played a, a very good game for the Steelers, they haven't they haven't really missed Le'Veon Bell that much. No. They really haven't missed him. Because the other thing is, the reality of it is, is when you stop and look at it and you go back seven years, Le'Veon Bell wasn't Le'Veon Bell as a rookie. Right. It's, so it took him it took him a while to become however to, to, to get into the person that he when is. you compare the two, Connor's better than Bell when Bell was a rookie. True. True. So there you go. You have a better building block to build from, and Connor is already a folk hero in Pittsburgh, given the fact that the man beat cancer and he's from the University of Pittsburgh. Right. So he already has the built-in fan base. So, um, yeah, Con or Le'Veon Bell overplayed his hand because nobody saw Connor coming into the league and producing at the level that he's producing. They'll be happy with him, and he's going to get the free pass, at which he doesn't need at this point. They'll be okay with him becoming a dual threat running back because he's already got the di most difficult threat down, which is running the ball and holding on to the ball. Right. But And why is this important to the Raiders? Because, again, people are clamoring for Le'Veon Bell to be a member of the Silver and Black next year. You have the armchair GMs clamoring Le'Veon Bell. But see, what you people fail to realize is one of the big reasons why our locker room is half empty right now is because all the cancer got d extracted out of it. See, there are th there's no room for that kind of BS in the locker room. And if he's displaying the prima donna BS and he's not in their locker room and he's also alienating himself from about 80% of NFL teams because of his behavior, 
damn what he does on the field. If you're going to poison a locker room, you're not worth the money that you're demanding. Well, the point being is that the and that's a great segue for one of the things that I wanted to talk about as well. I want to talk numbers, okay? I want to say the number 80 and I want to say 4 out of 33. Those are important numbers. The number 80 and no, it's not Jerry Rice's number when he was with the Raiders and the Niners. The number 80 is the amount of cap space that the Raiders have going into next year. Eight zero million dollars. That's as of right now. And that does not take into consideration cap casualties that may come up. Eight zero million dollars. And what were the other numbers? Four in thirty three. Four picks in the top 33 in next year's draft. And oh, by the way, if you know how to get seats in Nashville, please let me know because Captain Jack will be there for the draft in April in Nashville coming up. So if there's a way uh, that for me to figure out how to get seats, let me know because I'm going to be there with all my garb on, ready to represent Ready Nation. But let's get back to those numbers. I can say, though, that I do have friends and family there, so if they're selling them to locals, let me know, and I I have plugs there that would be able to buy tickets for you if they go on sale to the locals first. Well, then then that's a good thing to know. Anything else? Well, you know, th- and that's why El is on the show, because he has locals in Nashville that's going to help, help yeah, I mean, me out. Yeah, I mean, I got fam that's there. So, I mean, I mean, like fa- like blood family. So, I mean, we we all, there's, well, there's a way, Cap. I mean, pirates do what pirates do. I got gotcha. you. So. Well, well, let's talk about those numbers then, El, and thank you for that information about the tickets, because I will definitely wholeheartedly take that into consideration. $80 million. And oh, by the way, while we're throwing out numbers, let me give you another number at you as well. 17.2. That is the amount of money that we have tied up in our starting guards. Kelechi Osemele and Gabe Jackson. No, they're still on the team next year, and that's not part of that $80 million in cap savings that we have next year. So let's just say... Of that 17.2, what do you want to do about that $80 million? What do you want to do about that $17.2 million? What do you want to do overall? And I'm not even talking draft picks at this point. I'm talking $80 million with an added operative of another possible portion of 17.2, whether it's a full 17.2, whether it's a prorated 17.2, or a portion of 17.2, because I'm telling you right now, Coleccio Semele's contract next year, $10 million. Gabe Jackson's contract next year, $7.2 million. I, personally, if it was last year or the year before, okay, yeah, I'm paying that. But not next year for two guards that have repeatedly found themselves on the wrong end of the injury report and on the wrong end of the ledger sheet for what they're worth. But let's get back to that $80 million. We've already spoken about uh, maybe OBJ. We've already spoken about Le'Veon Bell. We've already possibly said some things about Earl Thomas being on this team, who would be coming back from an injury, by the way, which which makes me say no, which makes me to Le'Veon Bell say no, which makes me say to OBJ, no, we already got rid of a prima donna receiver who isn't doing much, and he garnered us a first-round pick, and that'll be the second part of this conversation. Well, we got $80 million, shipmate. What are we going to do about it to financially and frugally put it out towards the players? Now, granted, there's 33 players under contract. 33 players under contract for next year. So obviously another 22 are going to have to come out of that $80 million. But there are some big splashes you can make. And who would you like to see as a one-two punch in a big splash for the Raiders next year in in positions of need? Well, I look at it like this. Okay, yeah, we're going to have $88 million or $80 million. And let me first go to this O-line situation. Okay. Yeah, they've been 
Gabe and Kalechi injured. That's this year. They do not have a history of injury problems. This year has just been a perfect storm of injuries. Other than Donald Penn, we do not have a history of offensive linemen getting hurt. And by the way, Donald Penn is, is in my mind, he's not in that $80 million, but that's an addition when Donald Penn gets cut, and I think he will be cut, that's an addition to that $80 million. I think that we will get a roster exemption for Donald Penn because Donald Penn will retire. He will not get cut. He will retire, which will offer us a roster exemption because I honestly feel that he knows the writings on the wall. He won't get another pay. He won't get another paycheck. His knee, his foot is done. His knees are done. He already knows it. I'm sure that they've had this discussion, and he would rather go out of Raider where he enjoyed his greatest success as an NFL player. He would rather retire a Raider than anything else, so he'll go out like that. He's at an age where nobody's going to give him any money. He'll retire a Raider. He'll give the Raiders that loophole. So we'll get money. We'll get a, a, a roster credit for him, him retiring. One. Two, I think we're going to be okay with the guards. We already know Colton Miller is a legitimate tackle. I think him breaking down just has to do with the fact that every NFL rookie lineman gets bumps and bruises because they're not used to playing this physical brand as a rookie. We're at that point where in a college season, he'd you know, be hitting a wall. He'd be hitting a wall in college. He's never played against this physical brand of football for this long. At this point of the year, yeah, okay, they're what, in week nine, maybe week ten in college, which means, let's take Alabama, for instance, what, they're in their ninth week, which means they've played three decent teams, so they've played maybe seven decent quarters of football at this point, the first strings. He's had to play seven, eight full football games. He hadn't done that in his entire life. So all these people that have never played the game, running their jaws, you don't know what you're talking about. These dudes, these young kids hit a wall because they're not used to playing football this long, this consistent. They're fresh out of college. They're not used to playing games for an hour. Constant. They're not used to that. Their muscles aren't used to having to fire that long, that consistently. Once this year's over, and they get a full year of offseason, a full year of training, their bodies get trained, they'll be fine next year. And if they're not they'll be looking for somewhere to get that second contract, which goes to my Amari Cooper thing. Everybody pissing and whining about him getting traded. What did he do to earn oh, no. the right? Let me finish. Oh, no. Oh, I, What I'm, did he oh. do to earn the right to stay here to get a second contract? His first two years, and see, and this is my theory about him. When he was at Alabama, great. He was playing for the chip every year. He, full effort. He wasn't getting money. He comes out because of potential. He got a contract for four years plus an option. The first two years he was here, he was hungry. We had a decent record. Then we got that 12, that 12 and 4 little miracle because we had a last place schedule because the sun shone on our dog's ass for that season. We had nine wins by a touchdown or less. We had five wins by a field goal or less. We got very, very lucky until Carr's leg got put on backwards. And that's what I kept telling people is that in 2016, when everybody was saying how great this team was, and we did, we had a good team at 12-4, and four, but we could have just as easily have been 7-9 and nine that year. 7 and and nine, and if not worse. What was the best thing about that season? Our offensive line was healthy all the way up until Penn didn't tell anybody his knee was hurt. And when we found out his knee was hurt, was on the same play that Carr got his leg broken. 
And so, Carr earned his contract because he played fearless. But what happened on that play, Penn has never been the same. Carr has, has not, not played the, same, the yeah. same until maybe the last three weeks when he start beginning to play like he had a heart again. And Amari Cooper has put forth a half-ass effort since then. He doesn't... Re- he, he, his effort, his ability's there. His potential is there. You don't come into negotiations for your second contract when the biggest thing you have to put on the table is potential. You get drafted for potential. You do not come to negotiations for your second contract when the biggest thing you have to negotiate on is potential. Your potential should be fulfilled by the fifth year of your NFL career. If you're still talking about potential, then you're probably not deserving of the money you're going to ask for, which is why, if we're talking about potential, you are worth a draft pick, which is what we got, and his problem is now for the Dallas Cowboys to figure out. And i tell you what, I was very, very happy with getting that one for Amari Cooper. Yes, Amari Cooper has a projection of being a fantastic receiver, a projection, a possibility, the capability. But you know what? He wasn't living up to it here. He was not happy here. So the Raiders went and turned around, and they got a first-round pick for Amari Cooper. And that's what you do for projections. Projections. Those are all words that are used at that combine and on draft day not year five of an nfl career i tell you what we have had some good comments ryan downs was saying that we can pick up Jadavion Clowney and landon collins that's those are that's a good pair to pick up i i wouldn't mind picking up either landon uh landon collins or Jadavion Clowney. daryl williams as well an offensive tackle out of carolina apparently 27 years old i'll take your word for it ryan because again i don't i, I don't have it in front of me but, uh, you know, good players. We have if the Clowney's capa- available, I feel that. Oh, well, the, but, but isn't it funny thing is, is that if we get Jadavion Clowney and everybody was saying how we made a big whiff on some guy named 50 Who, and now 50 Who is on another team and he still gave us what uh, is at least right now, and this was at those numbers I was giving you right now, the 50 Who... And our man Tony it's, Beard says he has till the thirteenth. Yeah, yeah, t- till the thirteenth for for uh, that's with Le- Ladavion. Uh, Le- 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 yeah, Bell to uh, not Ladavion. Le- Le'Veon. Le'Veon. I I get. I made a, I made a mash. Ladavion Clowny Bell. There you go. Le'Veon Bell has until the thirteenth. Tommy, thanks again. But here's the point. Right now, the Raiders are sitting at two, ten, and twenty five in the first round, and that's why. This pirate is going to be in Nashville next year. This pirate is going to be there because I want to see what the Raiders get. I wouldn't mind getting uh, 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 Clowney. I I, definitely want to be there. Point being, again, there's plenty of players. And as long as, and this brings it full circle to Reggie and John Gruden. They need help. They need people to help them out. Reggie is a good cap guy. John, uh, X's and O's, I don't want him to be my GM. And that's why I would do something that the, the Browns did this past year. And that is bring in a an advisor. And this guy that I'm going to say, okay, first of all, all you people would say he's a drunk. Okay, yeah, he, he does have alcohol issues. But I tell you what, Scott McLuhan, who is... A Raider from birth. His father, Kent McClone, played for the Raiders in the 60s as a defensive back. Scott has been in the personnel business for years. He was with the Redskins. He was with several other teams. He does have an alcohol problem. And as long as he stays on the wagon and takes care of himself, he is an asset. Again, Scott McClune was actually helping the Browns this past year, and they had a hell of a draft. They they pick up Baker Mayfield. They pick up Denzel Ward. They pick up a couple of other really good players for the Browns, which are making them a viable, viable team. So again, great for him. As long as we can have some help for Reggie 
and that needs it. Now, again, other people are saying that maybe, maybe it's going to be, oh, hell no, Bruce Allen, Ryan Downs. Hell no, Bruce Allen. I mean, I would much rather have the guy whose words I was just saying, and that is by the, the walrus, give me a home grin in there at least for some help. But Bruce Allen, hell no. Don't want any part of Bruce Allen. But thanks for that input, Felicia. Bruce Allen. Yeah, Bruce Allen. The guy that was with Gruden the first go round in Tampa Bay and hey, in you're about Oakland. to make me cuss. Don't you start with them. look I'm joking? Oh, okay, you better be joking, oh, yeah. Ryan. Do not want any part of that. Identify I, your jokes, damn it. <laughs> You better be joking, Ryan, because I want no part of Bruce Allen. Bruce Allen is a yes man that will write checks without any fiscal responsibility and then get that no bang for the buck. I want somebody there. Uh, Scott McClellan, if he's available, I'd love to have him as an advisor. Uh, but there are plenty of other people out there. But Reggie needs help. Clint Scales and his crew have probably been one of the worst scouting crews as far as draft picks that I can see. Reggie has whiffed on a lot of the drafts other than having both uh, 50 Who and Derek <laughs> Carr land in his lap in 2014. Have you really think of anybody that's memorable? Like I said, you can say Cooper, but Cooper didn't really live up to any of that. Right. So he's whiffed. Now they've done pretty well in their latter round picks. But not nobody of real significance. And by the way, for everybody that's bitching about Gruden cleaning house because of these Reggie picks, I want to say this as well. Reggie McKenzie was getting draft picks that Dennis Allen and Jack Del Rio wanted because it's a team effort. They had a vision for the team. Dennis Allen and his staff told Reggie, this is what we want on this draft, so this is who we are going to get. GMs draft players that coaches request. It's not like the GM drafts the players and say, here, make this work. No, it's a group effort. Once again, keyboard kingpins, you know, armchair GMs, you don't know what you're talking about 95% of the time. That's why they don't have a hotline for y'all to talk to anybody in administrative positions in NFL boardrooms because you don't know what you're talking about 99% of the time, which is why when I when you get on my nerves in the group to moderate, I let you fly. Just call me baby powder. Let him fly. Bye-bye, <laughs> Felicia. Here it is. Well, like I said, getting back to point is <laughs> in, 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 on a big segue. Uh Reggie and John are going to work together. There's going to be some, shall we say, coordination. Kind of like the, the guy in Friday. Co coordinate. Got to coordinate. Gotta, gotta coordinate with, with Actually, the Actually, that was Boomerang. Well, coordinate. Well, whatever. Anyway. Same guy, different movie. There you go. Point being is that there's going to be some coordination between Reggie and the staff and Gruden, and hopefully with some help. We do need some help. We need We need to let it get together. That is why the guys are gone. These guys were built for another organization. There's not who, what, and they are not who, and they are not what Gruden wants for his envisionment. So here's the point. I had a, I had a little a little face-to-face -face via the keyboard on Facebook today while I'm driving. I won't, I won't admit to the fact that I was texting and driving because that would just be wrong. But I had a little tete-a-tete -tete with a gentleman that was saying how bad uh, our coach is. And I'm saying, dude, he's been here for eight games. He says, well, we can bring Del Rio back. I said, well, Del Rio was here for three years. You're going to, and I have to say it, you're going to shit can John Gruden after eight games, whether you like it or not. It's his administration. He has at least three seasons to show what he is making. You know, kind of like Dwayne says, can you smell what the rock is cooking? Well, Gruden's cooking something. Whether it's good, bad, or indifferent, you got to give the man three years to figure out what he wants. And that is why this roster is bereft. This was roster has been cleaned up. 
This roster has gotten people to go. If you don't want to be here, you're gone. DRC wanted to retire. He retired. Tank Carradine wanted to get released. He was released. And, of course, uh, Irvin wanted to get the hell out of here. He got the hell out of here. I don't think he, I mean, and the thing is, no. He wanted to sit on the sidelines and pout like a female. So, and I'm not saying that to discredit all you wonderful, beautiful women out there, but y'all know what I'm talking about because I'm not going to say the word because, I mean, you know, you can be descriptive without cussing like an idiot, you yeah. know, just because you're trying to get a reaction out of somebody. You just don't need to, you know, it, that ain't necessary. But the reality of it is, is this. If you have, if you need to carry your emotions around in your little purse, then, you know, maybe you need to just go ahead and be gone. And that's basically what's happening. You don't need all of that negativity and you don't need all that drama. I mean, that's why right now we're down to 33 guaranteed paychecks next year. And I guarantee you that's going to diminish. Because if they don't come in ready to put in work, they're going to be gone. You know, it's not like just because you have a contract doesn't mean I have to pay you. What it means is you're going to get an opportunity to earn that money. And if you ain't coming in ready to earn that money off rip, buy. Bring somebody in here that's hungry. Because obviously most of the people that got let go came in here and they acted like they had a right to get that bread. And they didn't. Amari Cooper did not have a right to get the money that he had. He had the, he had the opportunity to earn it and he didn't do it. And I tell you what, when you have the same agent as 50 Who, who comes in and says that we are going to be asking for top five receiver money and starts floating that around the time of the uh, the trade deadline, you can see where this was going. And I like I said, point, 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 give the Raiders a A-plus in the fact that they have a first-round draft pick. Again, number 10 right now from the Dallas Cowboys, number 10. 2, 10, and 25 right now in the first round. Thank you, Oakland, for your crappy schedule. And that might go to number one, by the way. It depends upon what's going on. 2, 10, and 25. And they can only gain. They can only gain on that. So we got a lot going on. We got a lot going on. Yeah. We got all of these picks. Like I said, if we're talking all of these picks in the first 100, we got, as of right now, six picks in the first 100. 2, 10, 25, 33, 66, and 97. Sounds see, like a Powerball number. Yeah, see, and, and my thing is, I mean, I'm not even worried about all of that yet. Because the thing is, it's not it, 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 It's not even worth, it, it's not worth my energy. It's not worth my time to worry about it. I mean, it's not even the off season yet. It, it's, I mean. We still got we, eight games to go, we, shit, man. We have eight games to go. The college season's not over. I mean, come on. There's, there's, like, you know, gems that we don't know about. There's gems in 1AA. I know it's called F something. I don't care. It's 1AA. Y'all want to call it something else, call it something else. It's 1AA. There's NAIA. There's all kind of players everywhere, you know? So the reality of it is, and the first mock draft I see in one of my moderated groups before next year Bye, I'm, Felicia. I'm letting you fly. Bye, Felicia. I don't do all that madness. Y'all want to start all that dramatic madness? You're getting set free. So the reality of it is, is it's about football. It's about this nation. When the nation's done with their agenda, then you can start talking about draft this and draft that. I'm not listening to the rest of that garbage, and I'm not going to look at it. So the reality of it is, stay focused. We got other business to tend to. And see, and the thing is, as far as the rest of the league goes, it's going to be what it is. We, right now, are in a mode where it's not about how many games we're going to win. We're doing working interviews. If you prove yourself worthy, you'll be in a silver and black come camp. If you prove that you got issues with coming out here and working hard and building on something, because I look at it like this, get ready for next year. Next year, it's probably not going to end up the way you want it to either. But I guarantee you this, when they kick the doors open in Vegas, we're going to be on an upswing. I tell you what, and the Raiders have done some things to address that. This past week, 
they signed Coney Ely and they signed Jaquez uh, Smith. Jaquez Smith actually had uh, played pretty well for the local Bucks here, you know. And the only reason why I know his name is because I used to remember all of the, uh, shall we say, the radio little bylights that the guy, uh, I can't remember what his name, he's the same guy that does the Florida State announcing. Um, it, the, he's a big blowhard for the Bucks, but it's like, Jaquez Smith has made us, okay, whatever. Point being, the, kid, the kid's got some ability. And if you don't remember Coney Ely, Coney Ely almost would have, should have been, and could have been the MVP of the Super Bowl. The uh, when the when the Panthers were playing a couple years back, he could have just as easily been an MVP had the Panthers won that game because Coney Ely played out of his mind that Super Bowl. He's a very good defensive end, although he's on his like fifth team in five years or something ridiculous like that. He has ability. So, and he's on the younger side, whereas, you know, uh, Frosty Rucker is a snaggletooth long, long uh, boy that's just been in the league a bit too long. I don't think that uh, Mr. Rucker is going to make it another year, whereas Coney Ely and Smith actually have the capacity to be on the roster next year. I'm not sure how, how young Smith is, but he's got to be, he's got to be younger than these guys. So anyway, the Raiders have done what they need. They've actually got a pass rusher where Bruce Servin wasn't doing anything but clipping his nails and chugging some Gatorade on the sidelines. At least we got somebody that can rush the passer. And they went out and did that. Again, the roster will be shaken up. We have the capabilities with all of these, with the cap, um, uh, what, what shall we say, that the large excess of numbers and a, the large amount of picks, we have the capabilities to, to throw this around. And I'm going to let y'all remember one thing, okay? I'm not sure who said it the, uh, the first, but there is something that I'd like to remind everybody of. There was a team years and years and years ago, and they were the Dallas Cowboys. They sucked. They sucked so bad that their quarterback, Troy Aikman, was 1-15 and his first year in the league. And they had a running back by the name of Herschel Walker, who they traded to the Minnesota Vikings for an inordinate amount of picks. An inordinate amount of picks. And I'm not sure, I can't remember exactly what year that was, but that was the beginning of a dynasty with Troy Aikman, and then they had Emmett Smith, and then they had recently signed, I think it was, uh, they had signed Michael Irvin out of yeah. Miami, and that was the beginning. Yeah, that's, they got the triplets out of right. that trade. Right. Well, no, no, they didn't, the, the triplets were there even before the trade, because in the trade, they ended up getting. Um, Russell Maryland. They ended up getting a couple linebackers out of it. They ended up getting, uh, and, and I can't. They remember. got the cornerstones of that offensive line out of that trade. Exactly, too. exactly. They got they got the once they had Troy Aikman had the people in front of him to help protect him. And I'm I'm trying to find that information right now. But once they had the cornerstones of the line, once Aikman had people that were going to be in there. To, to make sure that Aikman stayed upright, that that wasn't a 1-15 team. Wow. Oh, the 1989 Cowboys. There you go. I knew I would get the year. Okay? They traded. He traded Walker. And then within the next few years, they had back-to-back and almost back-to-back-to-back Super Bowl championships in 92 and 93 in 1995, based upon that draft. Like I said, 88, Jerry and Jimmy they had Michael Irvin in the first round. 89, they selected Aikman. 90, they took Emmett Smith. And then, during the Walker trade, look at the guys that they got out of that Walker trade. Russell Maryland, Alvin Harper, Kevin Pritchett, Dixon Edwards, Godfrey Miles, James Richards at, at guard, and Eric Williams, future Hall of Famer. I tell you what, this plays well in the fact that the Raiders are set up like this. Okay, again, right now we're sitting with at least $80 million in cap space, 
probably going to be upwards of $100 million in cap space. And they, like I said, right now, we have cornerstones right now. We already have young contributors that we picked up this year in the draft. Hurst, Hall, Key, Miller at left tackle, maybe even Nelson at cornerback, and Parker at right tackle, giving a couple couple years, maybe we'll be getting some good things with him. And again, some of the free agents that they have that they have, and I think that they've done well with is Worley. Worley is 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 a good free agent signing. If you pair him with Conley at corner, and as long as you keep him there, they have bookends, they have availability. So you put that cornerstone with what we could have eighty to one hundred million dollars in free agent uh, uh, cap space with all of those picks. I'm saying this. I'm not. I'm not smoking anything. I'm not drunk on Harvey Wallbangers. Because I think it was Harvey Wallbanger Day the other day. I'm saying this. Okay, <laughs> the Raiders have the capabilities. Okay, this year is going to be dismal. One in fifteen, two and fourteen at best. Okay, that's. But again, this is an audition for who's on this team and who wants to be here in 2019 and 2020. Who wants to get to Vegas, okay? Next year, with the amount of cap money that they have, with the ta- with the hits that they have, and depending upon where they're playing, and right now my money is, is on San Diego because I've been told by in no uncertain purposes that unfortunately we're not going to go to Sam Boyd Stadium. This is what I've heard. If that if that is rescinded, then yeah, let's start the Vegas adventure early. Go into Sam Boyd. Okay, it's a forty thousand uh, seat stadium. Let us play in Sam Boyd. But if not, you go to Qualcomm. You build up that base in Southern California and Lower Nevada. You build the base there. Don't go anywhere else. Sam Boyd or San Diego at Qualcomm. Build the build the base. Build the team up in 2019, and by 2020, with the team that you build in 2019, which shouldn't be awful. I mean, at worst, at worst, you get back to six and ten. But I think you can probably have a seven, nine, eight and eight, nine and seven team in 2019 if you flip the switch right now, based upon who we have there already, who wants to perform, and the money and the draft picks we have. By the time you roll into Vegas in 2020, and I'm sitting there with my PSLs and my season tickets, and I'm happy because I have seats right next to the Oakland Ra- or sorry, the Las Vegas Raiders tunnel with the team coming out. I see them coming out. 2020, the team has the capabilities to be a team worthy of a playoff berth. It just comes down to what you do and how well you do it. You get rid of the people that are the excess, the sludge, the hangers-on, the people that are here on this team that don't want to perform. And you know where they are. You see it in their eyes. You see it in the laughs. And you see it in their capabilities of what they're doing and what not doing on the, the, the field. You see it. You see it in their effort, and you see it in their lack of ability to accomplish the basic tasks, Reggie Nelson. So the reality of it is, is... Like I like I, I've been calling it since about week four. This season is a working interview. If they are on this roster at the current time, it's an it, it it it's an audition, and there's a lot of there's a lot of fat getting trimmed. And for everybody that's having these fits over nothing, they need to just I mean, Raider fandom is being exposed. You fake bandwagon. Not knowing what it is like. I mean, and the other thing that I I observed and I've spoken about and commented on is this. For you real ones that have been around this squad, that you know, day ones that have been here for more than the last 10 years, you know, this is our first go round at what every other team in this league has gone through. We've never been bad. This last 10, 15 years, it's the first time in our existence that we have ever not been good. 
we've never gone through this. Uh, you, I, I, I tell you, though, kind of, sort of, maybe, almost, but I remember that there was some times... When? when in, in the late... In the late eighties, going into the nineties, mediocre we're, we're, and bad are two different things. Okay, well, okay, okay. we I'm have gonna, never been bad. Well, we were we were mediocre. We were good for five hundred. We have never been penciled in for shit, which is what we are right now. Well, remember though, we were two and fourteen the year that the next year that we got your J- Jabustus Russell two okay. and fourteen. Like I said, and that is. Post millennium. Well, we are in like a fifteen-year run of horrible. We have never done this. We had the best winning percentage of any professional sports team up until the late eighties, early nineties. Yeah, that that is okay? the truth. That is we the have truth. never sucked before. So for some of us older folks, some of us that have been on this. That have been doing this thing for forty years, uh, and and that would be me. We all, well, that would be us. Uh huh. Yeah. We We're already just... know, but now for these millennials that don't know nothing about a struggle, those are the ones that you find out here bitching and moaning and whining and crying because they don't know nothing about a hustle. They don't know nothing about what it means to be loyal to anything because they're front runners. So they complaining, and it that and it's getting on our nerves because we know what it's going to be like when we come back. So my 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 plea to all of y'all that don't want to do nothing but complain and throw blame at everybody, find somebody else to root for. Because the real reality of this is this: everybody is not going to be the best one hundred percent of the time. Because for all of you front-running Patriot fans, we remember the previous 50 years of that franchise. Oh, man, the Patriots used to be awful in the 70s when they had people like, you know, even even when they just started to get into the playoffs in the 70s with Steve Groven and Look, and, and, and Randy Vataha. And, and, the you know, toughest oh player. Oh, my God, they, they, they were horrible. Arguably horrible. one of the toughest men to ever play professional football is Steve Grogan. Toughest, hands down, was their old quarterback. This man played pro football with a broken neck. And everybody knew it. And he still would run diving head first. And was one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL playing with a broken neck. Yeah. But the team sucked. Yeah, they did. They did. In fact, Grogan took over for a certain quarterback by the name of Plunkett because Plunkett, who was the very first pick in the draft, I believe in either 70 or 71, the Heisman Trophy winner out of Stanford, the the man who was going to bring them, that franchise, back to prominence, he sucked so bad because he got into New England and couldn't keep upright that Grogan actually led that team, and they got rid of Plunkett. They yep. they said they had that we can't stand having this quarterback here for us. Plunkett's and that's how he gone. Ended up in Frisco. Exactly went to Frisco where he still sucked, and we picked him up on a basically on a whim to be a backup quarterback to Dan Pastorini right after the Kenny Stabler trade of Stabler to the Oilers for Dante Pastorini. And you guys know how that turned out. Pastorini breaks breaks a limb. Plunkett comes in. One Super Bowl, two Super Bowls later, and he's won it twice. So again, strange things happen. But let's look at the team that we got coming up this weekend there, L. And that is the 6-2 and two Los Angeles. Don't please call it, stop calling them San Diego Chargers. I'm going to call them San Diego because they don't deserve to be in my home city. Okay, well, <laughs> the who will be sharing a stadium and getting the crap uh, of, of the non-existence for the Cronky Rams Chargers? Okay, because they ain't getting any any glam in L.A., and the NFL, Los Angeles, belongs to the Raiders. But that's one point being said. But anyway, Chargers invade the Oco Coliseum. The Chargers are coming in at 6-2. and two. 
second in the AFC West behind another despicable team that we all love to hate, and that's the Kansas City Ketchup and Mustard Chiefs. So, again, the Chargers are looking to make a name. They've won the last five straight games. Five-game winning streak for the Chargers. And I was there last year, about this time last year, when the Chargers went into Oakland. It was right around the time that the fires were choking out a lot of Northern California. And you can actually still smell in the air the smokiness that was from the fires that were up and around Napa last year. The Chargers went into Oakland. There was a missed extra point, and I knew at the time I knew at the time that that was going to come back and bite us in the ass. I even remember that game because that was the game that Cordero Patterson had a rushing touchdown. I think it was about a 40-something yarder. And, and there was some some guy who was so stupid said, why didn't the Raiders use Cordero Patterson as a running back? And I'm like, dude, we did. We're the ones that showed New England how to use him as a running back. But I digress. The Chargers come into Oco 6-2. Obviously, you guys know the Raiders are at one and seven. Chargers are are obviously picked to be. I think that I saw that it was the worst point spread by the gamblers. Not that we extol the virtues of gambling, even though we're going to be in Las Vegas in a couple of years, of a hometown underdog by by anyone. I don't know what the point spread is. I just know that it's too many to two minus with the with the Raiders. I don't know if the Raiders have the intestinal fortitude. I mean, I love my team. I love my team. But they are literally the worst team in the AFC and could be thought upon as being the worst team in professional football. Only the Giants hold the distinction of being worse than the Raiders at this point. And again, remember, last year the Raiders beat the Giants, so that kind of makes sense as well. And what was the breaking of the streak for Eli Manning. L, Chargers coming into Oco. What do you see going on this game with the Chargers upcoming? A whole lot of stuff that I don't like. <laughs> um, what I see is things, just bad things. Um, not anything that I, I want to acknowledge as real. Um, it doesn't look good. Um, it doesn't feel good. But what I would love to see is a continued effort. I feel like we... What I, what I would like to see is the young players get an opportunity to play. I would love it if I didn't see Reggie Nelson the entire game. I would love it if, in victory or defeat, I just see 100% effort. Because if I just see full effort from everybody, I'd call that a win. Yeah. I'd call that That's all a win. we can ask for at this point. Yeah. I mean, you know that there are no moral victories in football. I got that. But the way the Chargers came See, and, and whooped on us last time that they played in, in L.A., there was just nothing that was done. I mean, right. the Raiders fans were there winning, winning in L.A., and now I think that was the that was the week I was going to uh, yeah I was going to London at that at that time and I didn't even get a chance to see that game and I I heard about it how horrible it was the Raiders got whooped in Los Angeles so I tell you what I think I'm going to call it as a could any team beat the Chargers sure. The Raiders have the possibilities, if everybody plays to their capabilities, they could surprise the Chargers. Do I foresee it? No. But as as you are saying, and again, I am going to be at every Raider game 
that for, I think every Raider home game from here on out, including Christmas, I want to see some effort. I want to see people playing up to their capabilities. I want to see, you know, people actually flying to the ball, giving their wherewithal to make tackles. No no stupid missed tackles, no stupid blown coverages. I mean, if they beat you on ability, so be it. But that's what I want to see. I want to see a full effort by the Raiders against the Chargers. I, I'm not calling it, I said, well, what do you call it for the the numbers. What are you calling it for the for the the, the, the yeah. spread? I don't care. I can't. I can't call numbers. I can't call a spread because the bottom line is there are games like take the Miami game. There are games that we lost. Take the Denver game for that matter. There are games we lost on effort. There is no way in hell that we should be losing games because there was a a, a, a missed tackle, so somebody eked out an extra yard for a first down. That's horse crap. If they got stopped and then somehow, some way they inched forward, no. That's effort. And it 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 that's the part. Okay, um and not to beat a dead horse. Amari Cooper proved why he's in Dallas on that interception. You going to sit up like a spectator and watch the brother that's kept guarding you make a catch as if the ball was being thrown to him because you did nothing to prevent the ball from being caught by the guy covering you? Come on. Effort. You out there making a paycheck just like everybody else. Do something to show people that that's what you're out there for. Well, I tell you what, I hope to see some effort. Again, I will be out there. Um, this weekend, uh, with with a with an initial start, I will be there on Friday for the uh, the Blitnikoff event, a charity event uh, for uh, the the house. Uh, I think it's the uh, the House of Hope for Tracy Tracy Blitnikoff, uh, a wonderful charitable organization. Please be sure to check that out on the lines again. Uh, uh, I, I, look under Blitnikoff, uh, Tracy Blitnikoff, and the foundation there. For a wonderful charitable effort, and again, if you're anywhere near the uh, the Bay Area this weekend, please be sure to get some information. Come on out to the Ronald McDonald House over in the Stanford area. I'm going to be there. Raider B is going to be there, and we definitely hope that you are there. I know you're going to be there in spirit, L. So, oh, of course, uh, he, he's there in spirit. So again, you got the charity dinner on Friday night. You got the event on Saturday. I'm not sure what's going on Saturday night, but I'll, I'll find something to do. That's for sure, for sure. And then, of course, Sunday's the game. And then, Monday, Veterans Day. Please be sure to remember, okay? Thank veterans. Thank the people that give you the, the chance to be here in a society. And remember, yesterday was Election Day. Thank a man and woman in uniform for giving you and maintaining the right that we have as Americans out there to be as free as we can be. But remember, freedom isn't free because the men and women in the service give that right to you. So be sure to remember that on Veterans Day. They risk their lives. They put their lives on the line. They voluntarily risk their lives. And there are cemeteries dedicated all over this country to our brothers and sisters. And I say brothers and sisters because my brother here, Captain Jack, and myself, we put our lives on the line volunteering. We volunteered our lives as members of the military for this country. Not because somebody made us do it, but because we wanted to do it. We served our country so you guys could do everything that you do. And so we, when we were done, could do what we're doing right now. We love you as Americans. It doesn't matter what color you are. It doesn't matter what you do or how you do it. You deserve to be able to have the right to do it. Just like me, Ebony, and him, Ivory. 
Uh, it kind of makes me want to sing, but I, that's because we're going to make sure <laughs> that we're gonna we're not gonna inundate you with another bad rendition of Ebony and Ivory. Now hey, you maybe. know we can do it. We got it good. Uh, you, you just a little bit. Nah, nah, because Andrea's not here to oh, manage it. Yeah, true. It. I tell you what, I tell you what, when Andrea comes back, and yeah. hopefully that'll be in two weeks, Andrea is in training uh, with her job, and uh, unfortunately we'll probably not be able to have Andrea with us next Wednesday. Hopefully we will, but probably not. So look for the, the triplets Myself, Captain Jack, Big L, and Andrea, Angria, Trask, to come back in two weeks for yours, mine, our Coast to Coast Raider Nation. Always a pleasure there, Big L, and thank you for coming over, shipmate. Of course, always, and thank you for putting your life on the line for this country. Aw, man, just this... Just a wonderful uh, time for me to be out there on the seven seas. And, uh, yeah, I can actually say the seven seas. But yeah, again. I was about to say, because I, I, I did my thing. They, ch- You know what? And see, the cowards in Congress, they changed the bill right before I was on the Nimitz. We never got to go out to sea while I was out there. Oh, man. I was in the yard. I ended up in the yards for two years while I was stationed. But I was in Seattle. So, I mean, I did my time, but I missed my Westpac by six months. Uh, well, maybe, maybe you and I will do a Westpac, shall we say, a, at least a vacation pack. I know we'll do at least a 12 pack. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, thanks for coming out. This has been Coast to Coast Raider Nation with myself, Captain Jack. And your boy, Big L, doing what we do. And remember, come join us next Wednesday Time right now, still at 11 p.m. Eastern Time, 8 p.m. Pacific. I'm Captain Jack, Raider on, and we'll see y'all next Wednesday. Later.